Hi, I'm Kelsey from Sweetbriar Farm. Wanted to check in and show you guys some new additions to the farm. We brought three new fainting dolings to add to our herd. Uh, and when we were looking for new goats to add to our herd, um, one of the really important factors we always look for when we're looking for breeders and new kids to bring home is um, biosecurity testing. We want to make sure that whatever animals we bring onto our farm aren't bringing any extra surprises with them. We brought home three new kids for Christmas and uh, it got us thinking about um, another good topic for a video you guys might be interested in. Uh, biosecurity for your farm and what does that mean? Um, so biosecurity is basically trying to prevent diseases from walking onto your farm. So you want to make sure every time you add new animals to your herd that they're not bringing anything extra along with them. So with goats in particular there are three major diseases that all herds should be tested for if you're doing breeding or if you're selling animals. Um, goats should be tested for CAE, CL, and guillemets. And I'll tell you more about each of those in a minute. Um, but it's important that we test for these three things because they're prevalent in the goat herd in the U.S. There's no treatment available for these things. And some of them can stay on your farm for years in the soil and the environment. Um, and also, uh, a lot of these diseases, animals can look healthy, um, but still be shedding virus or bacteria and contaminating your pastures, your barn, and um, passing things on to the rest of your herd. So it's really important that you're buying your animals from herds that test for these three things, and, um, and you should continue the testing on your own farm also. Um, it's important that you test all the adult animals on your farm each year because some of these um, tests that we have aren't 100% sensitive so it's possible to get false negative test results um, which is why you have to keep testing year after year. It's possible to have an animal that does carry say um, uh, yonis but it might test negative for two years and maybe on the third year it'll finally show up with a positive result so you want to make sure that you have a history of negative test results for these things on your herd and from the herds that you buy from to help protect your animals and your farm uh, so let's talk about the diseases specifically the first one I want to talk about is CAE caprine arthritis encephalitis um, only 35% of positive animals for CAE actually show symptoms. So you could buy an animal that looks totally fine and it might feel totally fine for many years, um, but it can still be infecting and spreading its offspring and other animals in your herd. CAE can cause painful arthritis, especially in the knees and neurological problems. That's the encephalitis part. And um, we notice in uh, mothers with CAE, they can have really hard udders that develop. Um, the virus that causes CAE is spread primarily through milk. So mothers will give it to their babies when they're nursing. If you have a bulk tank that you're feeding your kids from, you can spread it to your whole herd in a hurry. Uh, so it's something you definitely want to keep tabs on. It's also possible to spread the virus that causes CAE by reusing needles. So if you use a needle to give one goat like a CD&T shot and then you use that same needle to draw up more vaccine and give an injection to another goat, the virus can be passed that way. And it can be spread between two adult goats. If a positive goat is pooping in the same place where a negative goat is, they can pick it up from the feces. So CAE is something you want to keep tabs on and you want to make sure you're not bringing it onto your farm. And if you do get a positive test result, then you know you can isolate and remove that animal from your herd and continue testing and, you know, making bottle babies out of kids and testing those kids and being careful. All right, the second disease we always look for testing results from is called yonis, or it's spelled like John's. 
Yonis is a disease that can be carried by goats and cattle, um, especially uh, like large dairy farms um, for cows often have Yonis. So if you have cattle on your farm and goats, you wanna watch out in both of your herds for Yonis. Yonis is a disease that has a uh, an incubation period of years from the time an animal is exposed to the yonis bacteria and when they actually start to show symptoms but during those two or four years when they're not symptomatic they're still shedding the, the bacteria in their feces and while they're doing that they're contaminating your pastures your paddocks your barns and um, the mycobacterium that causes yonis can live in the soil environment for up to a year. So it's really important that you keep it off your farm so that you don't have to take a break from animals. Um, yonis, uh, we have tests for it, but the test is only 50 to 88% um, effective. So you could have animals that test negative for yonis one year and then test positive for it again in the future. Um, so this is why it's so important that you continue to test your animals after you bring them home if you're going to be breeding or selling animals off your farm. Um, the symptoms of yonis for goats are different than in cattle. In goats, um, they'll seem fine and then all of a sudden they'll become anorexic, they'll have clumpy poops, and within six to 12 weeks, they'll be dead. Cattle, um, the symptoms usually like diarrhea and scours that show up usually around like two to four years of age. So it's not something anybody wants to deal with. Much better to, to get buy from tested herds and not bring it home in the first place. All right, the third and final disease I want to talk to you about is called CL, or Cassius lymphadenitis. It's caused by a bacterium. It can enter into a goat or a sheep um, through a cut or through their mucous membranes, like the mouth or nose or eyes, and it causes abscesses. Um, sometimes the abscesses are visible, so kind of the classic picture would be like an abscess kind of behind the jaw and under the ear and the lymph node and um, the abscesses grow and they rupture and when they rupture that yellowish green pus inside is highly infectious and the bacteria that causes CL can survive in the environment for years. Years on your fence rails, years, years on your soils, in your paddocks, in your birthing pens, wherever those animals happen to be. Um, it's a problem for goats and for sheep. So if you keep both or if you've had sheep in the past, it's something you'll want to keep an eye out for. In addition to the abscesses on the lymph nodes that you can see, um, animals that are positive for CL also develop abscesses internally, which you won't see until you go to butcher the animal or do a necropsy. Um, but these abscesses that grow internally can cause real and real and dire health problems for your animals and ultimately death. Um, so it's not something you want to mess around with and it can last on your farm for years after those animals are gone. So it's something to take seriously. Um, so you can have animals that look normal on the outside but have those internal abscesses for CL. So it's important you do the blood work, you do the blood testing to make sure that you're not bringing any of that home. It's not enough just to look at the animal. How much does it cost to test? So testing, to test for all three of these diseases, it cost us just about a little less than $30 per goat um, to do the testing with our farm. And you only have to test the adult. Don't. Yes, you don't want to test animals under nine months. They're more likely to have false positive test results. Um, so test your breeding stock. Animals one year and older should be tested. Um, and all you have to do is get a small blood sample, like about three milliliters of blood. Um, if you don't know how to do blood draws, there's lots of good videos on YouTube to help you with that or a veterinarian. Um, I am neither. Uh, a veterinarian so um, but you can find someone in your area to help you do that if you don't already know um, or watch you know an extension YouTube video or a veterinarian's video to figure out how to do that um, but it's not difficult so you draw your blood sample 
you have to get special tubes which you can buy on Amazon or from um, like a veterinary supply company and you overnight your tubes to the lab. Now it's also important that you choose a lab that's accredited by the AAVDL, um, the American Association of Veterinary Diagnostic Labs. Um, and it's because uh, being laboratory scientists, Mike and I both know that it's easy to get things contaminated um, in the lab if you're not if you don't have the proper equipment and training and supplies that you need. So um, I know some of the labs that are cheaper, you know, are run out of people's garages and I'm sure they do good work. But if I'm going to all that trouble, I want to make sure that I can have as much faith in the results I'm getting back from my tests as possible. So we use the Texas A&M Veterinary Diagnostic Lab to do our testing. Um, I know Washington State also has a really good lab, Waddle, that's highly respected and also accredited um, by the AAVDL. So uh, it's not difficult to do. Both of those labs have really user-friendly websites that help walk you through what are the right tests that you want done on your samples. Um, and you can pay your bills online and give them your sample numbers and your goat names and they give you your results in a nice you know, PDF file that comes in your email so it's easy to pull out and show to your buyers when you go to sell your own kids one day um, so that you can show your buyers that you've done your due diligence and your animals are healthy and won't bring anything extra with them when you sell them to their own new farms. Be wary of people giving away free goats. Yes, there's no such thing as a free goat. Uh, so goats have become increasingly popular in the last 20 years or so and um, uh, that's why there's so many cheap goats around is a lot of people just don't don't know about biosecurity and and don't have the, the skills or the knowledge to know how about getting the testing done but the bottom line is it's an extra hour of work in the barn to get the blood samples and get them shipped out and done but it's definitely worth the investment in peace of mind we all love our animals and we don't want to have to deal with disease going through our whole herd. So it's important to take biosecurity seriously.